This is my last message uh, in this chapel, if the Lord doesn't bring me back sometime. And uh, it's been, this week has been hard. I have been so worn out the last couple of days, just, you know, the emotional process of breaking, detaching, and kind of leaving. It's hard. Um, and during this time, your mind tends to reflect on the past. I've been here four years. And uh, so your mind is reflecting on what's happened, how far you've come, what the Lord has taught you, how good he's been, the things you did right, the things you did wrong, and all of this kind of stuff. It's a very, um, uh, very reflective time. And as I read James, um, so difficult to get your hands around James, except that uh, the more you read it, the more encouraged you are. The first time you read it, it's a little discouraging. You're thinking, I'm not this guy, whoever he's talking about. I never can be this guy. I feel like uh, you're putting loads of work on me, like school, and I'm never going to achieve it, and I've already worn out just reading it. The more and the more and the more you read James, the book of James, the more you're encouraged because you begin to see something else. And so I want to show you what that something else is that you begin to see. I've titled this message, Portrait of the Heavenly Man. Who is the heavenly man? Jesus Christ. He is the heavenly man. He is the word that has been implanted in you. He is the spirit that lives within you. The spirit of Christ lives within you. Now, when you were born, did the doctor say, or, or not when you were born, but when you were conceived... And they were doing the ultrasound. Did the doctor say, hey, congratulations, mother. A beautiful tree that you have inside. Or did it say, well, you know, you, you're going to have a really cute kitty. Or did the doctor say, you know what, you've got a beautiful baby. Human baby inside. You see, the seed that is implanted cannot grow up to be anything else but what it began as. And the seed, the word, Jesus Christ, the spirit of Christ has been implanted in you and you cannot become anything else but the heavenly man. So instead of laying guilt on you today, instead of laying loads of work, instead of putting perfection somewhere out there in the future that you've got to run towards and work really hard, I want to tell you it has already been completed. It's done. And now it is growing, it has sprouted, it is growing, and it will achieve maturity and bear fruit. It's just a matter of time. You see that? Okay. Now, um, as we go over this, we're not going to do a lot of reading. This is uh, five chapters, and we're going to do the Lord's Supper in a little bit, so I've got about 20 minutes or, or less to do this in. So I'm just going to run through this quickly. Hold on to your seats. Grab on right there. All right. I want you to stand up for a second. I want you to turn to your neighbor and repeat after me. The, the word of God. Don't look at me, look at each other. Has been planted in you. And you are the heavenly man. Or woman. Or woman, okay. I'm using man in the, you know, very general sense. Okay, be seated. The portrait of the heavenly man reveals the internal expression of the perfect fruit of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer. The portrait of the heavenly man is an expression, an artistic expression of the perfect fruit of the word planted in you. 
You are God's painting. But you're not just 2D. You're not stuck on a wall. You're breathing and you're living and you're growing and you're changing. You are becoming the heavenly man. Now, if you're looking towards some goal out there in the future, some of you might think, well, if I work really hard, I can get there. I can do it. Maybe I can do it earlier than others and be better than somebody else. It's not the way it works. It's not the way it works. This is a journey. It is an everlasting, eternal journey. You've stepped on the first step, and you've got 10,000 years to go in this journey. So take a rest, be peaceful, get your sleep, gather some water and food, and get ready to walk. It's going to be a journey, okay? This doesn't happen overnight. But what the, what you have all, what's been planted in you has already become true. Now, um, next slide, please. What does this man look like or woman? And I want you to imagine, as we go through this, just imagine Jesus, okay? It's the easiest way to do this. Jesus. The heavenly man is a man of perseverance. The heavenly man is a man of perseverance. This man is inwardly joyful when suffering comes. You know why? That sounds kind of weird. But the heavenly man considers it joy because he knows that it's a testing of his faith. In other words, what we say is all wiped away. What we pretended is cleaned out. And what is real, the refined jewel that our faith is, becomes clear. It's all been cleaned and rubbed away. You can't hide in suffering. In suffering, all things come out. So the heavenly man is actually joyful inside the word there is uh, ultimately joyful. It's just hard to us, for us to understand. And the perseverance here is, uh, this perseverance is, is something that is bred through the suffering, through the, um, through the tough times that come into our life. These tough times aren't just pain. It could be loneliness. It could be uh, difficulty. It could be temptation. It could be poverty. It could be rich wealth. It could be any number of things. But all of these things are testing, constantly rubbing, constantly testing the make and the mold of our faith. So this, this, uh, this heavenly man is a man of perseverance. The reality of his faith comes out. Now when that happens to us, we're usually a little depressed because we realize how shallow and and uh, how shallowly, shallow and easily broken our faith is. But that's not the purpose of the test. The test is not to make you or break you. The test is to show you what is and what could be. So what is, is that our faith is weak. What could be is that your faith, as you're refined through the testing, becomes strong. So this man, this heavenly man... This man of perseverance is tested and tested, inwardly joyful, knowing what's happened, always keeping his mind on the long-term thing, goal, until, until his faith is mature and immovable. Imagine yourself, imagine yourself with a faith like a rock the size of Manhattan. Nothing, no one is going to move that rock. And your rock's actually bigger than that. Your rock, is, is his name is Jesus. The heavenly man is a man of perseverance. The heavenly man is a man with a sweet spirit. This man contains, he controls his selfish and his carnal appetites and his desires with an even greater passion. Now, I like this girl until I like this one more, right? We have our 
fleshly appetites, our fleshly desires. The heavenly man contains those with a passion and a desire that is even stronger. That desire is for the sweet fruit of the Holy Spirit. The sweet fruit of the Holy Spirit. He not only reads God's word, but he applies it to his life. And thus, he experiences the freedom from sin that Jesus told us about. And he experiences blessing in everything he does. This man, this heavenly man, is a sweet man. This heavenly man is an obedient man. Now, mind you, I want you to compare this guy with the world. The world is not this guy. The world's priorities are different. The world sees this man as weak. The world sees this man as a wimp. The world sees this man as a failure. The world sees this man as never accomplishing anything great. And yet, the heavenly man, Jesus Christ, accomplished everything. This man is obedient. This man rids his life of the moral filth that is in his life, that corrupts him in obedience to God's word of truth. This man reads God's word and applies it to his life. I think I said that just a minute ago. He applies it to his life daily, daily. When this man reads the word, he's not looking at the neighbor and saying, oh yeah, you could really apply this. That's not where you go. That's not where the heavenly man goes. The heavenly man reads God's work and he's staring into a mirror that speaks right back at him. And he takes this and applies it. The heavenly man is an impartial man. Impartial. This man sees everyone as equal in their person and in their value. And in fear of the ultimate judge who will judge all mankind, he treats every single living human being with respect and dignity and honor. The heavenly man, Jesus Christ, treated all people equally. He considered them all equal. This is not the world. This is not even us. We're always judging. I'm better at this. I've got higher grades. I'm taller. I'm shorter. I'm fatter. I'm skinnier. I'm better looking. I'm, I've got more talent. I've got something. I'm better. You're always pushing people down. That's not the heavenly man. The heavenly man sees the good in people. This heavenly man sees the equality of every living human being. The heavenly man is a faithful man. He's a man whose faithfulness to God is proven by the life he lives. The way he responds to others, the character that shines through everything that he does, and the works of God that he performs faithfully. This man is faithful, the heavenly man. The heavenly man is honorable. This man speaks few words because he's wary. He's wary of the restless evil nature of his tongue. Every human tongue is evil. It spits out blessing. It blesses God on one in breath, one breath, and then it's cursing man with the next. This is evil. The heavenly man is honorable. When the heavenly man speaks, he honors God with those, he honors God and those whom God has made. When the heavenly man speaks, and he doesn't speak often because he's wary of speaking, when he does speak, he he honors God. God, and he honors God by honoring man. 
If you aren't honoring to the man with your words or the woman, you're dishonoring God who made that man or that woman. When the heavenly man speaks, he blesses those who hear. He does not curse. He does not tear down. He does not hurt. He does not destroy. He blesses the, the person who hears. He blesses them with goodness. He blesses them with truth. He blesses them with encouragement. And when the, when the heavenly man speaks, he draws people to the truth. He draws people to the truth and to the love and to the peace and to the mercy and to the unity of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Woe to those who cause my little ones to stumble. It would be better for you to take a millstone, huge rock, tie it around your neck, and throw it into the depths of the sea. That's what Jesus said to us. Woe to you who cause my little ones to stumble. The heavenly man blesses. He does not curse. He draws people in towards Jesus doesn't push them away, doesn't block their way, doesn't push them down. The heavenly man is a peacemaker. This man tames his own selfish desires and causes them to bow down to God. This is a forceful act, almost a violent act. <laughs> the heavenly man takes his his fleshly, selfish desires. And he pushes them down in obedience to God. Peacemaker. This man's wisdom is displayed through a life of purity in his motives and in his deeds. He is a pure man in everything he does. He loves peace. He loves peace. Now, do you know what it means if you love peace? What are you going to have to give up if you love peace? You've got to give up the argument. You've got to give up your point. You've got to give up. You've got to fight for unity. You've got to fight for peace. Now, we're all willing to fight when somebody does us wrong. Don't do me wrong. I'll slug you. I'll hit you. I'll stab you in the back. I'll tell other people about you. I'll go to the authorities and arrest you. I'll go to the school administration, get you kicked out. I'll go to the lawyers and sue you. I'll do everything I can to defend myself. But what will you do to defend peace? What will you do to defend unity? What will you do to defend the spirit of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. What will you do to defend that? The heavenly man is a peaceful man. He's open to reason. You know what open to reason means? You've got to shut up and listen to the other side. It means you've got to stop thinking that you're right, and you've got to listen. At least listen to the other side. Submission to authority. This is something we do not like because obviously we can do it better than the person that's above us, right? We know more. We have better character. We can preach better. We can do it better. We can, we can work longer hours. We're, we're just smarter. We're better people, right? That's the world. But the heavenly man is submissive. Did Jesus ever do anything outside of the will of God? Did he ever speak a word apart from God, his Father? Did he ever take a footstep outside of the, uh, of the path that God set before him? Did he ever do a work, heal a person, say one thing outside of the will of God? And the answer is, he'll tell you all through the book of John, no, he didn't. He submitted himself 
to his father's will. And you know what his father told him to do? Live poor. Suffer. Don't defend yourself when they hit you. Go to the cross and die. Now, we're all, we all get up in a bunch because, you know, somebody tells us to wash the dishes. We're on a bunch because somebody tells us to do something. Well, you could do that. Why are you telling me to do that? I'm too big to do this little thing. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ did the small things. He came down from heaven, from heaven, the seat of all authority and power and rule. He came down here. And had dirty feet. Got a little hungry in the stomach. And felt nails through his hands and his feet. Jesus Christ was submissive. He was obedient to his father's will. Abundant mercy and uh, goodness. Not just a little. Not just what's needed. Abundance. Abundance. You know what it takes to get abundance? It's, you got to do it daily. It's going to take a long time. You've got you've to have your heart set on it. You've got to put your feet to the grinder to get abundant goodness and mercy out there. Now, um, the peacemaker is pure, loves peace. He is gentle. You know, Isaiah chapter 65 amazes me. Let me turn over there real quick. This blows me away. I'm sorry, 66. This is what the Lord says. Heaven is my throne. The earth is my footstool. Where is the house you'll build for me? Where is my resting place? Where would my resting place be? Has not my hand made all these things so that they came into into being, declares the Lord? Listen to this next verse and tell me who it's talking about. This is the one I esteem. This is the one who is in the center of my attention. God of heaven has his focus, his lens on this person. Who is it? Humble and contrite in spirit and trembles at my word. Lowly and broken and fearful at my word. Who is that? It's prophetic. There was a man that would come and fulfill this. His name is Jesus. Small, broken, fearful of God's word. Who are we supposed to be if we're going to be the heavenly man? The big man? The big woman? The popular woman? The popular man? Or the little man? The small man? The kind man? The peaceful man? And woman? The heavenly man is this. The heavenly man open to reason, submission to authority, abundant mercy and goodness, impartiality towards persons, and a sincere heart. You know what a sincere heart is? There's no hidden motives. There's no underlying stuff. You're not pretending. You're not working the angle. You're not trying to get one up on somebody else. You're not trying to dig dirt and lower somebody down. There's no hidden motives. Face-to-face, honesty, truth, and love, and compassion, and mercy. That's the heavenly man. The heavenly man is submissive and humble. Submissive and humble. This man tames his own selfish desires and causes them to bow down to God in obedience to God's desires. Now, if you're noticing, there's a cyclical thing going on here. I'll talk about that in a minute. It's on purpose. How, much, how many spirits are there? Tell me. One spirit. Is the spirit divided into many parts? 
Nope. Is the heart of God divided into many parts? One heart, one spirit, one Savior, one church. There aren't many different things. So when we read this thing, yes, it's all, it's all of it together. Nothing's missing. It is whole. That is what it must be. It would be like saying, oh, you've conceived a baby, but he's missing a heart. Sorry about that. I'm sure he'll be okay. I'm, I, oh, he's missing his head. Oh, I'm sorry. It looks a little weird, but he's going to be okay. It's not the way it works. The heavenly man is complete. All of this together, nothing missing. Okay? So, this man is a, perse- a man of perseverance. He is a sweet spirit. He's obedient to his father. He's impartial towards mankind. He is faithful To his father. And you can see it in his life. He is honorable towards all mankind. He is a a peacemaker. His first priority is a peacemaker. And by the way with peacemaker. Whenever you're looking for a church leader. The prime characteristic. Is godliness. And peacemaking. If he's not a peacemaker. He does not belong. In church servant leadership. At all. Because you're destroying the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. If you've got anybody that's fighting against the Trinity, they're fighting against God, and they don't belong in leadership. First quality of a servant leader in the church of Jesus Christ is unity and peace, godliness. Okay? So this, uh, this um, heavenly man, he is submissive and humble. He is considerate in honoring of others. He refuses to to give way to his selfish ambitions, his envies, and his judgments. His life is not focused on this world. Now get this. His life is not focused on this world. Instead, his view is on heaven. Now I all want you to look skyward. His views on heaven, which will surely, shortly be your destiny. Heaven is your destiny. Heaven is the place where you are going. It might be in tomorrow, it might be in 20 years, it might be in 50 years, but definitely inside of 120 years, you will not be here. Now, given that, That your life is so short. This heavenly man has his eyes on heaven. Life is tenuous. It's very tenuous. When I was 17 years old, I discovered something bad. I've discovered numerous bad things about myself, but this was a big one. When I was 17 years old, I kept getting headaches. My mother took me to the doctor. They took my blood pressure and they said, are you 17 years old? Your blood pressure is incredibly high. And I have been on blood pressure medicine since I was 17. Now, when I was 17, I could run 10 miles. It's, it wasn't a matter of health. My grandfather died at 39 of a heart attack. My father started having heart attacks when he was 40. It was a genetic thing. When I turned 17 years old, I was told your heart is diseased. Now, in my mind, my father's having heart attack. My grandfather's died. What's in my mind? Oh, well, you know, I'm free. I'm invincible. I'm going to live forever. I could do anything. Is that what I'm thinking? No. What I'm thinking is I've got, how many years is that? That's like uh, 21 years to live. I've got 21 years to live. What would you do with 21 years? I was looking towards heaven. I'm telling you, I was looking towards heaven. I needed something else than, than this life. And it's driven my life. The heavenly man has his eyes towards heaven. He is humble and submissive. The humbleness comes because he understands that you and I were made the same way. I was not made from a different mother in a sense. We were both born of and by the Holy Spirit. We were born by the Holy Spirit. That means you and I are sister and brother. 
That means we should love each other and not hate each other. It means we should serve one another. That I should work hard to make sure you go to school. Right? We serve one another. We love one another because you and I are brothers and sisters. So I honor you. I'm humble enough to know that we come from the same family. That we're all the same. I'm humble because my eyes are on heaven and I'm realizing I've got 21 years to live. That's it. I don't know if there's any more. Now, fortunately, I'm 45, so I'm, my heart is doing fine. I'm, I'm still on medication, but I'm doing great. So I'm expecting to live for a long time. The heavenly man is submissive and humble. Humble, because your life will not last forever. Where will you build your treasures? All right, I've got to move on. Heavenly man is patient and prayerful. This is the last part of James. He clings to the hope of Jesus Christ. The hope that Jesus promised, I will return. John 14, 21. I will return and bring you home to be with me. He is a man of routine. We don't like routine, do we? The heavenly man is a, a man of routine. And this is how. He tends his garden daily. Have you ever planted a vegetable garden? You've got to watch over those things. Water them too much, they drown. Don't water them at all, they die of thirst. Put them in bad soil, they never grow up. Put them in rocky soil, they, they don't do very well. They're stunted in growth. You let all the bugs begin to harvest and grow, and their plants eaten overnight. You've got to watch plants. You got to tend them. Now, your heavenly life, your garden, this fruit needs to be tended. Daily tending. You can neglect it or you can take care of it. The heavenly man is a, um, a man of routine who's tending his garden daily. He is, uh, he's forming his Christian character, protecting and nurturing his character in anticipation of the sweet harvest of the fruit of the Spirit. If you garden well, there's a harvest coming. There's a harvest coming. Tend your garden well. So, um, uh, he refreshes and cleans with forgiveness. He feeds with God's word and he protects and heals with prayer. He refreshes and he cleanses his garden with forgiveness. He feeds with the word of God and he protects and heals with prayer. This is the heavenly man. Now, we read this last part about uh, the gardening, the farmer. And I said that I would talk more about this. This is not, uh, this is something that has already been implanted in you. It's already complete. It is growing up to maturity. And you must persevere through this. We must persevere through this. Because we're all destined towards heaven. Jesus Christ. Do you see Jesus Christ in this heavenly man? Perseverance. A sweet spirit. Obedient. Impartial. Faithful. Honorable. Peacemaking. Submissive and humble. And patient and prayerful. You might say, well, you know, I've got part of it right. But that's not the way it works. As you tend the garden, there is one seed, one plant that bears one type of fruit that comes out, right? That fruit is the heavenly man. This heavenly man, this word of God, Jesus Christ 
the spirit of Jesus Christ is implanted in you. It has taken root. It is growing and bearing fruit. Does this give you hope? Does this give you rest? Does this give you peace? Does this give you peace? This is happening. Tend to your garden and let it grow. Now, um, we're going to do the Lord's Supper. And uh, if you've read the last part of James, it talks about prayer. Patience and prayer. We're going to do the Lord's Supper. And if, uh, as many of you know, John chapter 13, Jesus uh, goes into the upper room and he, he dresses himself in a towel, in a servant's towel. And he gets down on his knees. God of the universe gets down on his knees. And he commands his, his disciples to walk through one at a time and let me clean your feet. And Peter says, no, 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 no. Let me clean your feet. And Jesus again says, this is a command. Unless you do this, you have nothing to do with me. You're already clean, Peter, because of the word that I have given you. It's only necessary for you to wash your feet. Right? Forgiveness, my sisters and brothers. This is confession and forgiveness. We are pure. We are heavenly. The heavenly seed is already planted in us. But we walk this earth and we fail in this. We, we sin and we do evil and we, we are corrupted in many ways. And we need to wash our feet daily. And so today, as we take the Lord's Supper, I want us to do this. I want us to cleanse our feet for healing of sin and for healing of sickness. So I'm going to ask the, um, those who are going to serve the Lord's Supper to come down. We're going to do it a little differently today. Would those who are going to serve the Lord's Supper please come down? I was praying yesterday, as I did uh, have often, Lord, let me cleanse your feet. Jesus, let me cleanse your feet. And you know what the Lord's answer is? Okay. Cleanse your feet. Jesus is standing at the heavenly throne, but he has said, what you will do to these you'll do to me. So as we're doing the Lord's Supper, my wife and I are going to be standing right over here in the corner. And if, if, any, if any of you are sick or if you need to be forgiven, something's really weighing down on you, I want you to come to the corner and, uh, and we'll pray for you, okay? That's why we're doing the Lord's Supper. It's the way Jesus did it. He knelt, he washed their feet, as a command of Jesus Christ. And then, and then he broke the bread. And he said, take this in remembrance of my body broken for you. And he took the wine and he said, drink this wine in remembrance of the blood shed for you. Of my blood. So today as we serve the Lord's Supper, as we partake the Lord's Supper, I'm going to pray first that we might be uh, clean. That our feet would be clean. And then as we begin the Lord's Supper, if you just any of you are really weighed down with the guilt of sin, or if you are sick, come right over to this corner and we will pray for you, okay? My wife and I. Father God, thank you for today. Lord, we want to lift up this Lord's Supper. But before we lift up this Lord's Supper, we are all waiting at the door of the upper room. And Lord Jesus, even as you knelt down and washed Peter's feet and the other disciples as they walked into the room, Lord, please wash our feet today. Cleanse us of our sin and heal us of our sickness. Lord, wash away our immoralities. Wash away our disobediences and our dishonors. 
wash away our weaknesses, Lord, our sin, and cleanse our feet, Lord Jesus, before we step forward and we take this bread in remembrance of your body broken for us. And as we take this drink, this wine, in remembrance of your blood shed for us. Lord Jesus, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. sprouted, it is growing, and it is bearing fruit, persevere, stay with him in faith, and see it come day by day, amen, until the day Jesus returns, because surely he is returning soon. Father God, bless us today with health, with healing, with forgiveness, Lord, bless us with power and with blessing. Lord, bless us with the heavenly seed in us. Lord, you feed it. You water it in us. Lord, you tend to it in us and make it grow up to what you intended to be and make us who you intended us to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Go and be blessed.